Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I was just fixing the mirror. No big deal. On this episode of Drunken Forging, we're going to build a bearded hatchet. For this, we're going to need a beard and some beer. Let's get started. The materials we're going to need for this build is going to be a piece of wood about 15 inches long. No knots. That'll create a weak point. We're going to need a high carbon piece of steel so that we can harden and temper. I have 012 steel. And also, we're going to need a punch to punch through the steel for the handle. I made this out of a crowbar. And of course, we're going to need some beer. Okay, first we got to put the metal in the forge and let it get all nice and hot. So let's punch the hole about three quarters way back in the center. I made this punch out of a crowbar, but I should have made it out of a hardenable steel. I also should have angled all four sides of it. It would have made punching this hole much easier. It's taken about uh, a beer and a quarter to get this hole punched through about half an inch. I got about two more inches to go. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take as many beers. So I'm almost done the hole. I flipped it around and started punching from the other side. And I got a hole through it but I got to finish the size. So for that what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw it on the vise. That way when I knock it through, nothing's going to stop it. There we go, all the way through. I just gotta knock it out and then we can start working on the blade part. Now for this part we're gonna draw out the blade portion of the axe. When you're holding the axe you gotta make sure that you are above so that you catch the bounce back. And every so often, because we're making a bearded axe, <clears throat> we're going to have to put it on the horn of the anvil and hit it down. By doing that, we're going to give it a swoop, or a beard. I ended up welding a bar onto the steel. It'll make working with it much easier. I wish I had done this from the get-go. From hitting the steel over the horn of the anvil, I get an arch in the steel. Once I get that arch big enough, I can flip it over and start on the other side. Now that I've got arches on both sides, I need to get the one arch much longer for that bearded effect. To do that, I start hitting the cutting edge of the axe over the horn. Every so often, I have to go back to the flat side of the anvil and uh, make sure everything's nice and smooth out. After finishing the blade portion of the hatchet, I had to move on to the hammer portion of the hatchet. In order to do that, I had to cut off the bar I welded on.
I have the blade portion done and the hammer portion done. All that's left is to clean up the hole. I gotta open it up a little bit more than I had before and try and make it all nice and flat and smoothed out. This is uh, how hot the forge has gotten. It has melted and fused my fire bricks together. Now that we've got the rough forging done, it's time to start grinding. Red hot and a magnet won't stick to it, we can dunk it in oil and that'll harden it. Okay, first we have to get the oil, right now I got olive oil, we have to get that to about 130 degrees Fahrenheit before we dunk it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in some hot metal. Get the temperature of the oil up. Once it gets to 130, we'll be ready to dunk the axe. So I got it to about 132 degrees now. So it's close enough now. I'm going to check the metal, make sure it's not magnetic. stick so we know it's ready to dunk. And now I put the Axe head on the vise and let it cool to room temperature. Uh, once it gets to that, we're going to test it, make sure it is hard, and then we're going to temper it. Alright, now we're going to temper the axe. I set the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to leave it in there for two hours. After tempering, took it out of the oven, let it cool at the room temperature. It's all discolored. We gotta get the shine back. When grinding the metal after we've already heat treated it, I have to be careful not to get it too hot. If I see the color blue in the metal, I know that I've gotten too hot and I've ruined the temper. If that happens, I have to redo the whole heat treat process.
so we've done an orbital sander with a 220 grit on this portion of the axe that gives it kind of a scuffed look and then I use the belt sander up to a 220 grit on the cutting edge and then I polish it gives it a nice contrast left in a couple forge marks lets you know that it was handmade and then next and final step for this piece of the axe is to sharpen I had started on the 1000 grit side of the whetstone, now I've moved on to the 6000 grit side. Typically I would spend about 10 minutes per side of the stone to get a fully sharpened. Now we're going to work on the handle. You can get all these corners shaved off. So I got kind of the big basic profile now. I got a little hump here, so when you're gripping it, your hand doesn't want to fall off. I made the top here a little bit thinner. That's where the axe is going to go on. Now I'm going to put some finger grooves on it. And for that, I'm going to use the angle grinder. So here I put an 80 grit flap disc on the angle grinder. Uh, excellent for hogging away material on wood. Now I'm going to finish off these finger grooves with a uh, Dremel. I need to cut a notch in the handle for the wedge. So now we have the axe head fitted to the handle just a little bit and then we're going to hammer the rest on so it's a nice tight fit. And then now we're going to stick a wedge in there and that'll expand it near the top and this thing will never come off. Right, here's the little wedge I made. We're going to smack that in, and then theoretically, this accent should never come off. Now we just got to cut that excess off, and we're all good. Now it's time to stain the handle. So I put a couple clear coats on the handle, it's all dry now. The last thing I want to do to the axe is put on some letters. To do that I'm going to do electro etching. So I took a picture of the axe, I put it on PowerPoint. Using the ruler I sized it to the same size as the axe. And I drew some lines that I can use for reference when I print it out. And then I was able to put the letters exactly where I wanted them. And I made another page of just black and white. I'm going to print that out. I'm going to use that as a stencil to cut. I put painter's tape over the stencil because it was partially transparent, allowing me to see the letters so I could cut them out. I intended to take the paper off of the tape, but it ended up sticking too well together, so I had to glue both the paper and the tape to the axe to make this work. Now I have my stencil cut out. I'm going to use some um, stick glue. Okay, 
Okay, so I have a car battery charger. I got the positive side hooked up to the axe. I got the negative side hooked up to a cotton ball. And I soak the cotton ball in really salty water. And then all you do is press down. Probably about 30 seconds every letter. And that will burn the letter into the steel. I ended up doing another 30 seconds per letter, so about a total of one minute for each letter ended up being enough time to make the letter burn deep enough into the steel. Finally done the bearded hatchet. It used to look like a chunk of metal and a piece of wood, and now it looks like this. Got the electro etching done on both sides. So sharp, ready to test. There, we're gonna test the hatchet on some wood. on the wood outside and it worked quite well. Now we're going to test it on this random candle I found. See how it cuts through this. Um, I thought I'd put it here. Where did I put the hatchet? Oh, hey Cooper, you have it. Wait, why do you have it? You're a dog. What, what do you give me that look for? Uh, uh. No! <laughs> Cooper, you're a monster.